And I'm Gavin. And we are so glad that you're here with us today. Recently, we've been learning all about what Jesus taught during his time on earth. First, we heard about his Sermon on the Mount, then the cost of following Jesus, and last week we learned all about prayer. And this week, we're going to learn about what Jesus has to say about our possessions. But first, we have a special guest with a special game. Are you ready? Let's do it! Welcome one, welcome all to the Great Wheel of Challenges show. Our usual host, Rob Parker, could not be here tonight. So he picked me, his cousin, Stu Berry, to step in. That's right, and guess what? You all are our contestants today. So get ready for the Wheel of Challenges game. We're gonna spin the wheel and you have to do the challenge that it lands on. Now, before we spin the wheel, I need all the kids at home to count down with me and then say, spin that wheel. So let's try, ready? One, two, three. Spin, spin that, that wheel. wheel. Looks like you got the Pictionary Challenge. Hope is gonna draw a picture and you kids at home have to guess what she is drawing. Are you ready? All right, get ready. Did you guess it? It's an ice cream cone, great job! Now it's time for our second challenge. Everybody at home, say it with me. Spin that wheel! It landed on the Sally Sells Challenge. This means that you all have to say, Sally sells seashells by the seashore five times with us. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. 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 Wow, that one was really hard. Did you guys do it? Great job! All right, time for our last spin. You all know what to do. Say it with me. One, two, three. Spin, Spin that, that wheel. wheel! Looks like you got the I Spy Challenge. Kids at home, we are gonna count to 10 and you have to find three things in your room that are green. Are you ready? One, One two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. ten. Did you do it? Did you find three green things in your room? Congratulations, you have successfully done all three challenges. You know what that means? Confetti dance party! Well, that's our show, ladies and gentlemen. Don't forget to tune in next time to the Great Wheel of Challenges. Every day, 4 a.m., channel 8192. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you next time. Goodbye! Bye. That was so much fun. But Hope, that game show has me thinking. If you were to win one million dollars, what would you do with it? Hmm, that's a good question. I've always thought that if I won a million dollars on like a game show or the lottery or somehow, I would buy a really big house on the beach with a pool and go on tons of vacations with all of my friends. That sounds like a lot of fun. Hey kids, what would you do if you won a million dollars? Maybe you'd buy a really big house or plan a trip to Disney World or get a Lamborghini car or lots of toys or maybe lots of candy. Actually, Jesus teaches us about a story of a rich man. Let's take a look at today's video to find out more about that. Thousands of people came together to listen to Jesus' teachings. Someone in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to share our father's inheritance with me. Jesus said, Watch out and be on guard against all greed. True life is not found in what you own. Then Jesus told the people a parable. A rich man owned land that produced many crops. He didn't have anywhere to store all of his crops, 
So he said to himself, I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I'll have so much stored up that I can stop working and relax. But God told the man, you are a fool. You will die this very night, and then what good is everything you have stored up? Jesus told this story as a warning for any person who stores up treasure on earth and is not generous toward God. Then Jesus told his disciples, do not worry about your life or your body, what you will eat or what you will wear. Think about the birds. They do not plant or collect grain, yet God feeds them. Aren't you worth more than birds? Jesus also said, think about the wildflowers. They don't work or make clothing, yet they are lovelier than any king in his fancy clothes. If that is how God takes care of grass, which grows today and is cut down tomorrow, how much more will he do for you? Jesus told his disciples not to worry about food or drink. Seek God's kingdom, he said, and God will provide what you need. God is happy to give his children the kingdom. Finally, Jesus said, sell your possessions and give to the poor. A thief can take away treasure on earth, but treasure stored in heaven lasts forever. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus is our greatest treasure. Jesus left his place in heaven to live humbly on earth. Jesus obeyed God to set up his kingdom. We can give generously and trust God to provide everything we need. Wow, I learned so much from that video. PAG Kids, did anything that Jesus taught about possessions surprise you? I'm sure it surprised some of the people in the crowd that day. And even today, a lot of people believe that having a lot of money or buying the newest and best things is what's most important. And it's fun to talk about what we would buy with a million dollars or if we got rich, the big houses and toys and candy. But to Christians, that's not what is most important. What's most important to us is Jesus. That's right. The man in the story cared only about himself. But Jesus teaches us to be generous with what we have. We share our possessions with others, and we share the good news about Him. And we can be generous with what we have and not worry about not having enough, because Jesus tells us that God will always provide for our needs. And if Jesus can provide forgiveness for our sins, I'm sure He could provide things for everyday life, right? And our Christ Connection for today talks about this too. Let's take a look. Jesus is our greatest treasure. Jesus left His place in heaven to live humbly on earth. Jesus obeyed God to set up his kingdom. We can give generously and trust God to provide everything we need. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, it says this, And the same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. God created you in his image, and he really cares for you. He will provide for you your every need. And he already did. He provided forgiveness from sin. And he did that by sending his son, Jesus. We have so much to be thankful for. And this week, we have a challenge for you to practice being grateful throughout the week. It's called the Gratitude Challenge. So this week, every day, we want you to think of five things that you're grateful for. And share this with someone that you know or write it down. A great way to do this is at dinner time with your family or before you go to bed. We would love for you to take a deeper look into today's lesson. And you could do that with these discussion questions. We encourage you to talk through these discussion questions with a friend or family member. In what ways has God been generous toward you and your family? How can we fight against greed? Share a time you were selfish or felt tempted to act selfishly. How can generosity lead others to Jesus? And now let's pray together. God, we thank you for today, and we know that everything that we have is a gift from you. Help us to be generous and have joy in giving and giving away our possessions. We love you, and we pray this all in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week for PAG Kids Online. And don't forget to practice the gratitude challenge, and you can even send us an email or a video with all the things that you're thankful for. See you next week. Bye! Bye.